Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, life, to see what's happening. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand to praise. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just celebrate. Just lift your hands and tell God, thank you. Out of the depths of your spirit. Amen. Just celebrate him. Amen. All that he has done and is yet going to do. Amen. Truly he is a way maker. Amen. And we celebrate that fact. Amen. Give the Lord another hand for the praise to the Lord. And a, a, a season of improvision right now. Amen. But nevertheless, God is God. Amen. We have to learn how to love God without some stuff. Amen. Amen. He's still saying amen. You got to learn that the first instruments were you. Amen. And you were the ones who created those things. Those things don't operate without you. Amen. So you are that instrument. So as we lift our voices, it is a melodious sound unto the Father. I want to go straight into the word on this morning. Thank God for each of you. Glad to see you. That you pressed your way beyond the rain. Amen. And I want to possibly conclude what I've been dealing with this month. And in the fact that uh, he is speaking is what we have entitled this particular series this month. Uh, going back to Hebrews 1. Hebrews 1. Looking at chapter 1, verse 1 says, God who has sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophet, have in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down the right hand of the majesty on high. So we talked about the fact that God is speaking. The problem is not that God God speaking. The problem is we ain't listening. Amen. The Bible says that in um, Revelation 2, uh, it says that uh, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches, and to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the par paradise of God. So in the end, what we see God pretending to mention saying, the problem is my people ain't listening. He that hath an ear to hear, hear. God is speaking, we have to hear. I want to invite your attention this morning to Amos, though. I want to go to the book of Amos, Old Testament. The book of Amos, 8th chapter. Amos, the 8th chapter. Hallelujah. So go back, listen at some of the other messages. They've already been uploaded um, as we've been dealing with this particular subject matter. I'm in Amos, the 8th chapter. If you're there, say amen. amen. All right. Amos 8. I want to pick it up in verse 11. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even unto the east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not what? Notice God says, and most times we misquote this verse, we say that there's going to be a famine of the word in the last day. That ain't what that said. Look at it again. There's going to be a famine of what? Hearing. There's going to be an issue with hearing. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Watch this. God is forever speaking. The issue is not speaking. But here, I must submit this to you. Why is God saying, now watch this. This famine is God instituted. You got to ask yourself a question. God, why you won't let me hear you? That famine is God instituted. God, why won't you let me hear you? He said, because I've been speaking and you ain't doing nothing with what I said. 
I've been speaking. I've been preaching. I've been teaching. I've been prophesying. And you still ain't moved. Ooh, did you see that? The holy days come, said the Lord God. Look at this. I will send a famine in the land. He says, watch this. You ain't going to be hungry. The issue ain't going to be food. But now watch this. Don't miss this, y'all. Come on, Rose, kiss this. Man don't live by bread alone. Huh? Living is going to be cut short because you don't have a word from the Lord. Living is going to be cut short because you have not heard what God said. Ooh. Look, what he says now, I'm in the book. The days come, said the Lord, I will send a famine in the land. Well, what is a famine? Scarcity. Lack. Shortage. God said the problem is going to be watched in. And not because he ain't speaking. And not because he don't have enough servants speaking. You remember the story when the, when the, when the man died and went to hell? And he told him, said something about it. He said, no, no, no. If you don't hear who's there. God says, I don't have to send nobody from the dead to tell nobody I'm real. I got prophets on the earth. But if you ain't hearing who's speaking, why do I need to send anybody? He says, so watch this here. He says, there's not going to be a salmon of bread. He says, or thirst for water. But it's going to be of the hearing. He said, people are going to get to the place, they ain't hearing God. They ain't hearing the word. Now watch this, don't miss this, Jay. God is speaking, but you ain't listening. God is speaking, but you can't even comprehend it's God. God says, I'll be in your midst, and you won't know it's me. Ooh, I'll be on your road, in your front door, at your table. And you won't hear me. You won't hear me. The issue is we need to get in a place where we are hearing God. Now go, go to Revelation 2. I, I quoted it, but I want to show it to you. Go to Revelation 2. We talk about a lot of issues of the end, and we go to Timothy and we find everything that's going to happen. But one of the greatest issues of the end is we ain't hearing God. Look at Revelation 2. And he goes on, he's talking to the angel of the church that's at Ephesus. Ephesus, watch this, is to be the most mature church there is. Right, right. He says, but, uh, well, let me go and take it all in. He says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right, these things says he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walk, walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and how thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I got somewhat against you. He said, Come look. There was a time you used to love God to the degree that all you wanted was the word of God. If I could just hear the word. If I can just get in the presence of God. If I can just be where God is. Come on, come on, right. huh? One word from the Lord. That's all I need. Huh? Look what he said. He says, Thou left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. Repent because my word ain't first authority in your life no more. Repent because my word is not a priority. You living without my word. How is that? Yeah. Oh, foolish Galatians, who don't be with you? You used to couldn't do nothing until you got a word, but now you can roll without one. Huh? You move without even seeking God. You make moves without God's permission. I'm in the book. Watch this now. He says... Remember therefore whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou what? He 
says, I'm going to remove the candlestick. Well, the candlestick is the light. Well, the word is the light. He says, I'm going to remove the light from among you because you ain't paying attention. I'm going to separate the light since you ain't appreciating his purpose. Huh? Am I in the book? But thou, six, but this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to who? He told to each one of us. To every one of us. He says, did you hear what I said to you? Did you hear what I said to you? He says, he that have any here, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. And watch this. And to him that overcome it. So what does God say? I'm giving you the word that will cause you to overcome. But since you ain't overcame, it's because you ain't heard. And it wasn't because I didn't speak. It's because you didn't. He that have an ear, let him hear. Why? He says, what I'm sending you is so you can overcome. Now, if you sit here today and say you ain't dealing with that, I'm going to tell you you lie. And I'm going to tell you that you got a God that loves you enough to get you out of it, but he got to speak to you, to direct you, to get you out of it. Huh? So what are you going to do? He that have an ear, you got to hear what God is saying. To him that overcoming what I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. God says, I want you to live, right. but I got to put a word in you. I want you to survive, but I got to put a word in you. I want you to beat that thing, but I got to put a word in you. I want you to overcome, but you're going to need a word. Yes, 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 good. Is it making sense? Yes. All right, go to, go to Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3. <laughs> Hebrews 3. Let's pick it up in <clears throat> uh, let's see. Let's pick it up in 14. No, 13. Hebrews 3 and 13. But exhort one another daily while it's called today. Lest any of you become hardened through what? For we are made partakers of Christ, the anointing, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will what? What? See, a lot of times what happens is when we have we struggle in this area because we don't allow our heart to get hard. Why do we let our heart get hard? Because it didn't happen the way you wanted it to happen. Or it didn't happen on the time schedule you wanted it to happen. But how do you know? We ain't on, God ain't on our time. We on God's time. We on God's time. Look what he goes on to say. Why did it say, today if you will hear his voice, harden out your heart as in what? God said, you'd rather provoke me than hear me. Huh? you rather provoke me, test me, try me, than to obey me. I mean, obedience is better than the sacrifice. Come on, y'all. Look what it goes on to say. For some, when they had heard, look what it goes on to say, 16. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all of them came out of Egypt. God said, listen. Them that provoked me, they didn't come out. Now check that verse out. We thought, bro, we thought all of them came out. Yeah, all of them did not come out. Watch this. Because when the man of God said it was time to move, they're going to provoke God and stay. Some died where they were supposed to have left. Is that in the book? And the issue was what? Hearing. But when they should have been hearing, 
They allowed their hearts to become hard. Stubborn. Stiff-necked. Huh? I hear you, God, but I'm going to do it my way. I hear you, God, but I got a better way. Well, if you had had a better way, it would work than that. So your better way wasn't the best way because it didn't work for you. Come on now. Look what he goes on to say. He says, verse 17, But with whom was he grieved for the years? Was it not with them that had sinned, who carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? God, I heard you, but guess what? I don't believe it. God, I know you, you told me about your stripes on the hill, but I'm still struggling with that. Yes. God, I know you told me I'm the head and not the tail above only, but not beneath, but my circumstance is speaking louder than what you're saying. Yes. Huh? My environment, you're trying to bring me out the environment, but I don't want to lay. Yeah. Huh? You said go. Come on, y'all, think about it. What would have happened if Abraham had not left? He said, leave your family, your kindreds, and go where, if he had not left. Your Abraham, your father of faith. Your example of what happens if you trust God and take him at his word. Scripture said, 19, look at this, y'all. So we see that they could not enter in because they didn't believe. It ain't no different than the spies. Go over there and look. Got grapes all in this. Go there. We see it. But we also see giants. And we see the giant bigger than you. Watch this. Although what you said is true. Watch this. Because you spoke. We saw. But we don't believe. There's some serious stuff going on. There's a famine. God says, how long should I keep speaking to you and you yet ain't moving? How long should I keep speaking and you yet have not made adjustments? Huh? You do know the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is 400 years and God closed his mouth. Mm -hmm. there's a place you can get God to where he said, you know what? I'll just be quiet. Right. And I just won't speak. I won't say nothing. Right. Yeah. Let's see how far you can go right. without me. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Go to uh, Psalm 95. Tell you, neighbor, I got to get this right. Look what it goes on to say. Look at verse, I'm in 95, I want to start it. I need to read the whole thing, but I'm not. I'm going to verse 6. Psalms 95, verse 6 says, Oh, come, let us what? Bow down, let us kneel before the Lord, our who? Now, pardon me for going this route, but if he your maker and he made you with ears, And he gave you two ears as opposed to two mouths. So you should be listening twice as hard as speaking. Your maker gave you two ears. So he that have an ear, but guess what? You ain't got just an ear. You got two. Huh? You got two ears to hear God clearly. He says, oh, come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are his, are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, there it is. What? A is what? Harden not your heart as in the provocation, as in the days of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. 
tempted me, proved me, and saw I ain't a God to play with. Because what happened in the wilderness? They died and never entered to the promised land. Their actions and ways did not provoke God to change what he said. God says, you are dying before I, make, before I give you what you want. The Bible says, he let them all die. They were suckling the wilderness because they refused to hear God. Did you, are you seeing this? Huh? He says, when your father tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. They err in my heart. Well, what does the mouth say? Out of the bundles of the heart, the mouth speaks. God says, I've been speaking my word, but what's coming out of your mouth ain't my word. Huh? Out of the bundles of the heart, the mouth speaking. So that means the heart has ears. Huh? But when you ain't hearing God, and you ain't saying his word, huh? he said, put me in remembrance of what? But what you tell what you say before God ain't the word. Because you ain't heard. Huh? You produce more, more Ricky Lake and Oprah. More sign seal. More rap songs. Because you know more rap songs than you know scripture. There you go. <laughs> I know we don't like it when it hit hard like this, but God said, you know more of the song than you know of me. How do you know every word to the song, but you don't know my word? You know the television jingle that don't know my word. You know the commercial that don't know my word. Come in the book. Watch this now. He says, for 40 years long, I was grieved with this generation. And say it, it is a people that do what? Err in their heart. The error is you ain't listening. And they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not what? Can't get into the rest of God. Now, that rest can also be, but watch this, that rest can also be what you ain't got to yet. And that's what God said, why should I give you more if you ain't did nothing with what I gave you? We say God increased, God said, for what? Until you learn how to be faithful over that which is you can't be ruler over that which is you got to learn how to be faithful in that which is another man before I even give you your huh? Come on, y'all. All of that requires what? Hearing. Go to 2 Timothy. Second Timothy 4. Actually, I'll go ahead and start at 1. 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and what? Doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure. The time is going to come when people don't want to be taught the word because the word puts a demand on you. Now I got into it on a couple other messages. Ain't no way in the word world to heal the world word and don't change. But what happens is when people don't want to hear the word, they don't want to change. Because the word challenges you to do something different. To be something different. 
We come out of the world into the marvelous kingdom in the light of God's grace and mercy, but you got to change. The Bible talks about a revelation. On the outside is going to be the hormones, the dawn. All those but those who refuse to change. And look what he says here. He said, they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heed to themselves teachers having what kind of ears? Don't tell me what's going to challenge me. Don't tell me what's going to provoke me. Just entertain me. Make me laugh. And laughing can be medicine. But laughing can also be a cover-up. Because some things just ain't funny. You're not improving ain't funny. You're not achieving ain't fun. Right. You're not having ain't fun. Amen. Hmm? Itching ears. Gossiping. Mm -mm. Talking about folks. Talking about the word. Talking about what's good. The Bible said that which is good, perfect, lovely, and wholesome, and of a good report. What's the good report? Huh? Everybody, child, did you hear? Did you hear the bad news? What? When are you going to tell me some good news? What is the good report? Huh? Why you always want to tell me some? Be mindful of those who always want to give you a bad story. Ain't no garbage can. Huh? Put that somewhere else. Look what he goes on to say. He says, and they shall turn away their ears, verse 4, from the truth, and shall be turned unto what? Amen. They just want a story. Huh? They just want to be inspired. They just want to be uh, 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 uplifted with, with no demand. God says, no, I'm putting a demand on your life. I'm, I'm provoking change. I'm demanding change. I'm demanding you be better than you were, wiser than you were, more prosperous than you were, more healed than you were. Huh? God says, I'm provoking or calling for more. Don't just tell me a story. Don't just tickle my ears. Listen, truth hurts. But tell your neighbor, I still need to hear it. Huh? Don't lie to me. Tell me the truth. The Bible said, speak the truth in. Now, we know what happens sometimes. Folks go to speaking truth to you. You'll turn off from me. Huh? It's called constructive criticism. Not destructive, but constructive. Sometimes others can see what you now, we can accept that on a human term, but we deal and struggle with it on God terms. And God says, everything you do is open before me. So every time I send a word, I'm dealing with something. Every time I come in, I'm coming to cut something off and cut something away. I ain't trying to kill you. I'm trying to heal you. I'm trying to get you blessed. Ooh, go to Acts. So there's not a famine, there's not a shortage of the word. The shortage is saints stop listening. But again, as we read, he is yet speaking. Whew. Acts 28. All right, Acts 28. Let's pick it up in verse 25. It says, and when they, when they agreed not amongst themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Arius, the prophet unto our fathers, saying, look at verse 26, saying, go unto this people and say, hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand 
Seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and should be converted, and I should heal them. Why is there a family? God says, because you've been doing your own thing so long, I'm not going to do nothing. Read that book right there. Huh? He said, you got eyes, you see, but you don't see what I'm doing. You got ears, you hear, but you can't even hear what I'm saying. Lest I should heal you and you be converted. Watch this. Bro, get this. Your healing is through the word of God. Your conversion is through the word of God. But God says, I'm rejecting. Yes. Because I've been speaking. I've been decreeing. I've been declaring. I've been sending my word week after week, month after month, year after year. And just as the Bible said, watch this, the dog returns to his vomit. The pig returned to his slop. He said, that's what my people are doing with my word. He said, the word is, he, you remember in the parable when he talks about the pearl of a great price? But what happened? What did the pig do? It put the pearl in the dirt. Because the pig was cleaned up, dressed up. But when the pig was able to get loose, it didn't want to stay clean. It went right back to what it was brought up out of. It didn't value the pearl. It didn't value the word. And it put the word in the mud. Not the soil, but the mud. Mm -hmm. I know it's tight. I know it's tight. Watch what he says. He says, verse 28, Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentile, and that they will hear it. And when he has said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among yourself. Now here's the thing I don't want you to miss. This word has been sent to you. But your season is going to come unto an end. And God says, I'm going back and deal with the Jews. That's right. So if you miss this window of hearing, right. if you miss this window of change, if you miss this window of adoption, because you do know we're being engrafted in, right. if you miss the window, But boss, we got we we got from now on to here. No, you don't. Time is moving. Time is changing. So what are you gonna do? Huh? And you know how we do sometimes. But I'm gonna put off. I got I got a little time. I'm young. I'm young. Well, all of us been young. We're older now. And getting old. Huh? How much time do you think you have? Right. How many of you think are in the grave right now saying, if I had a chance to listen? Right. Huh? If I had a chance to listen. How many right now do you think would say, if I had a chance to listen? If I had another Opportunity. Isn't it amazing we say that after it's too late? That's what happened with the rich man left. When he was ready to change, watch this here. When, when he was ready for family evangelism, it was too late. God sent somebody back. Don't let my brother, don't let my family make the mistake I made. <laughs> 
but you was rich enough to have made a difference while you were on the earth. Now you find out that you didn't listen to the message, you didn't think hell was real, but you in hell. And everybody you look down on and everybody you, you, you despise is over there resting and relaxing. And now you want to fund the gospel. It's too late. When you had an opportunity to hear, you didn't hear. All right, go back to Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5. I'm almost done. Hebrews 5. Again, we talked about that dullness of hearing. Look what he says here. He says, Hebrews 5, we'll pick it up in verse 11. Look what he said. He says, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are what? For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one should teach you again the first principles of the oracle of God. The issue is, he says, you dull in hearing. Hmm? You dull in hearing. Either ain't hearing or you dull of hearing. In essence, if it don't sound right to you, if it don't make sense to you, Don't want to understand. Ain't trying to understand. Ain't asking the question because to hear anything you don't understand, the first thing is what? Can you elaborate? Can you explain that? Can you make that make sense? The all of hearing don't ask questions. Just let it ride. Watch this. Ignorant to all truth concerned. Go to Hebrews 6, stay right there. Go ahead and look at verse 12. Here's the problem. He says, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. He said, here's the problem. And that's what I just said a minute ago. You're lazy. When you're dull of hearing, you're lazy because you ain't trying to find out the truth. You ain't asking questions. If you don't know what a word means, go look it up. But you won't even get a dictionary and look it up. Everybody got Google on the phone. Google it. We Google everything else. You Google how to make macaroni and cheese. You Google everything else how to fill out a resume. I'm not just... You Google everything. Well, why don't you Google a word you don't understand without just running by it? God, what are you saying? Because I don't want to miss this opportunity. Huh? God, what are you saying? God, what is your instruction? I don't want to miss you. I need my rest. We're dull of hearing when we're slowful. And I know we don't like that word. But the sloth is an animal that sit there and just hang there all day. We ain't going to get it in any just lazy. Listen, when you too lazy to eat, huh? Watch this. Same thing in the church. You too lazy to grow. Right. Come on, come on now. Man don't live by bread alone. He talks about in Hebrews 5, I just didn't go into it. The sincere milk of the word and Peter as well. But listen, come on now. When you won't feed you. Now God said, I don't gave it to you. I gave you 66 plates. Took care of your appetite. I got you right here. But listen, when the food is in front of you and you won't even eat. You got the fork, the plate. Now if it would be one thing, y'all everybody don't have Thanksgiving. If you sat out at that table and wasn't nothing there but the plate and the fork, you be mad. You'd have been mad. You'd have been cussing this weekend. <laughs> How you gonna invite me to dinner and ain't got nothing here to eat? Huh? But that wasn't the case, was it? Huh? You had the dressing, you had turkey, you had you had everything in front of you. 
You just had to put it on the plate. But you didn't just fix the plate just to put it on there to take a picture of it like some folks do. Gotta take a picture of their food and send it around the world. I don't want to stand there yet. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna catch. Some things I'm gonna, I'm gonna get with it sooner or later. I just ain't got with that one yet. My daughter, she do it all the time. She'll be all right, you know what I'm talking about. But we go to a restaurant, she gonna take a picture of it. I'm like, who are you sending that to? Why Facebook got to know what you eat? Anyway, that's that. I just don't, tell me y'all gotta help me with that. Keelan, Keelan, you gotta help me with that. I don't know, help pass out. Uh, we gotta take a picture of it. What is that, provoking others? I don't know. Uh, but listen, you gotta put it on plate, but it ain't gonna be enough for it to be on plate. You got to digest. If you're going to get what's in the food that will help you, you got to digest it. You got to do the same thing with this word. You got to digest this book. What he told Ezekiel? Eat the scroll. Huh? Eat this scroll. Put this word in you so you can live. Ooh, come on, go Psalm 130. I'm almost out of here. I'm going to load this one today. Psalms 138. How necessary is what we're dealing with? Look at Psalms 138. Look at it. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before God will I sing a praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy hope, for thy loving kindness, and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified the word. Why do we need to hear God? God said, because my word is bigger than my name. Y'all ain't kissed that one. My word. Oh, watch this here. Ooh. Hallelujah. How many of you know this? Let's, let's, let's watch this here. It's your revelation. I mean, look, if you had a magnifying glass, would the magnifying glass change what you looked at or would it change your perception of what you looked at? Good God Almighty. Huh? So why this here? If I had a magnifying glass right now, the print, the front on the book won't change. Catch this, Jay. But my perception of what I see is magnified that's what he said. You got to magnify this. Your perception of this value. The perception of its value. It's got to be big to you. He says, I magnified my word above my name. He said, hey, my name is something. Because demons flee at that name. But if you get a word. Yeah. Huh? Come on. He says, watch it here. Because that's what he fought the devil with and whooped him. He says, I'm giving you everything I had to win. But you got to let my word be big. You can't be dull when it comes to hearing my word. My word got to have value in your life. Job said, listen, I want it more than my necessary food. Uh, that ain't on my list of scripture. Uh, Job said, I want the word more than I want the food. Huh? He said, listen, that's when I'm fasting. Because I want the word. God, I want you to speak to me. I don't want my stomach to be in the way of my hearing you. Come on. Come on, because you know how we do when your stomach starts growling, what happened? Oh, you can take care of that. Uh, you can take care of that. Okay, but what happens when your spirit starts? When you going to take care of that? The Bible says, oh, you're out with man, period. You're in with man. But see, some of us fell on the outside than we are on the inside. Come on, y'all. Is it in the book? Oh, Jesus. 
All right, let's go to First Thessalonians. I promise y'all, I'm almost done. Is it good to you, though? To make it sense. First Thessalonians, look at chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm going pick it up in verse 11. He says, As ye know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God who have called up you unto his kingdom and glory. For this cause also we thank God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the world of men, word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh in you also that believe. God said, you got to receive this. This is going to be life-changing if you get it. Your life is going to change. Your family life is going to change. Your money is going to change. Your healing is going to change. Your mental capacity is going to change. Your emotions are going to get online. He said, but you got to what? Receive the word, which you heard of us. He said, and receive it not as the word of men, but as it is truth, the word of God. What does it come to do? To effect you. Effect you. Which simply means bring results. God sent his word to bring results in your life. How are you going to get dull of hearing what it is that's going to give you results? Woo! Stay right there. Go to 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 3. So look what he says. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have what? And be glorified even as it is with you. All of us right now, God, let your word have free course in me. God, I don't want to be dull of hearing. I don't want my hard heart. Speak, Lord! Your servant is listening. Attune my ear to hear what your spirit is saying. Hmm? I don't want to know this, this, and that more than I know you. Watch this. Watch this. This ain't on my list. But watch this. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger. Huh? He said, pray that the word have free course and that we may be delivered. Oh, Lord, look at that. Y'all hear verse 2. And that we may be delivered. Um, God, give me your word so I can get delivered. God, give me your word so I can get delivered. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. God said, I'm sending you this word on purpose. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to get you delivered. I'm trying to grow you up and get you in a place you need to be. All right, so let me give you these right quick. Reasons. There's about seven of them. Reasons we don't hear. Number one, no relationship. Because if you ain't in a relationship with somebody, you ain't here. Huh? You got to have a relationship. How does a relationship grow with it if not with communication? Communication is key. It's dialogue. Huh? God speaking, you listening. You speak, God listens. You got to have a relationship. Second hindrance is sin or pride. Sometimes we're too proud. Or well, sometimes there's a sin that's blocking us right. from hearing. Right. But your pride can also. Because see, you'd be surprised who can give you a word or give you some encouragement, but you're looking down on them. Yeah. Uh, you, you above them. You, 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 you know, they're beneath you. 
But you'd be surprised. Some of the smartest people are homeless. Well, I dealt in the field for oh, 15, 20 years. I done met doctors, lawyers, come on now, architects. They were homeless. Now watch this. They were homeless, but the knowledge is still there. The wisdom and the insight is still there. Be mindful now how you treat folks. You don't know who God going to use huh, to bless you. So, no relationship, sin or pride. Three, distractions. A lot of times you can't hear because you're distracted. Right. Too, many th too, too many voices. Huh? You got too much going on. Too many people speaking at the same time. That's when the Bible always talks about how Jesus went off into a quiet place. Sometimes you got to quiet, look into a quiet place. Huh? Sometimes just riding in the car by yourself at the pool is just the quietest place. Man, you turn your praise and worship on, you can hear that. I told you, I used to just lap the city just to do it. I go down 459, come all the way around, just so I can hear God. I take that ride, put my worship on, take that ride by the time I get back. So, Sherry, I'm straight. Huh? Sometimes you just got to go for a ride. And then sometimes you might not go for a ride, you just got to close the door at the house. Huh? Just gotta get along. Right. You know, some folks actually go get in the closet. Well, go get in the closet then. Yeah. Yeah. Close yourself off. Right. Why? I want to hear. Right. Yeah. Hmm? Sometimes God will speak through a song. Sometimes you have your Bible at a word to jump up off the page. God got many ways of giving it to you, but you gotta be in a place to hear. You have it in here, let it hear. All right, let me keep moving. What, what else hinders? False expectations. Because that ain't what God promised you. That's just what you want. Huh? False expectations. Did God really tell you that's what he was going to do? Sometimes we limit ourselves because we got a way that seems right. And God said, I didn't tell you that. Hmm? I want to do exceedingly above and live above. But you limiting me. False expectations. Now our expectation is from the Lord. But make sure it's from the Lord. Huh? Alright, next one. Trying too hard. Sometimes we just try too hard. We make it more difficult than it is. Hmm? You know how some folks just got to be deep. Stay simple. Stay simple. It's just as simple as me and sitting right here having conversations. Don't, 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 don't. I got to hear thunder. <laughs> the sea billows got to roll. Lightning must strike three times. Keep on. You gonna mess around here and hear them. Right. The Bible said God speaks in a still small heart. I need a fire to break out. Okay, burn down the house. Then what? Come on, come on. Get don't get unrealistic. Stay. We miss God because we won't stay. So we try too hard. Next, disobedience. Disobedience would turn off your head. Because hmm? God ain't going to keep speaking to you and you're doing what you want to do. Huh? Disobedience. No, no, no. Last one. And all of these we talked about in all these scriptures I went through. Unbelief. You can't hear God because you simply just don't believe God can do it. You don't believe God wants it for you. You don't believe God wants it for your family. And so rather than hearing God, you hear everything else but God. 